So you guys know, I recently survived an explosion of my plastic into fuel reactor. Now that was definitely a very interesting experience to go through and I'm glad to be safe and I have a lot of protocols, safety protocols in place to make sure that type of thing doesn't happen again. And if it does happen, to make sure I'm at least wearing some bloody shoes. Come on in, right? But that reminds me, this is the perfect time, you know, while I'm going through this recovery stage to talk about what's next, talk about what's happening, talk about some critiques and concerns people have and address them. Because of course, in the field of science, what keeps science alive and breathing is critiques, okay? So it's all welcome, just all respected. As long as it's uh, well with etiquette, that is, okay? Because you, we can make critiques, but you don't have to be demeaning about it. You don't have to be condescending about it, right? We can all respect each other. So let's talk about some of the biggest concerns people have. First of all, of course, the most obvious big concern people have is, okay, where are your shoes? You blew yourself up. Where's your safety equipment? Okay, yes, actually, I'm a welder, so a certified welder at that, and I took an OSHA course, so I was in the wrong completely, I was dumb completely, and I know better, because when I'm welding, I have all the safety stuff on, I do more safety stuff than most people, okay, in a welding class, most people wouldn't even wear face shields, I always wear a face shield, right, so I knew about it, I just didn't do it, um, because it was, it was hot as hell, but you know what else is hot as hell? Getting burned on your foot and feeling like you're being cooked alive for the next three days straight. Don't come back as a leopard, boy. <clears throat> a cheeto. A cheeto, leopard, something. So, obviously, it's not a worth it. It's not worth it to um, go through that gambit of uh, putting your safety on the line just for some temporary uncomfortability. So, that concern is addressed, okay? Things like the distiller exploding, I didn't have a pressure gauge on it because it was meant to be in negative pressure should have a pressure gauge on everything regardless should have pressure relief valves on everything regardless that stuff was a budget cut situation not an excuse but at that moment it was a matter of uh this was not in my budget to get these types of things and i was just trying to get this gasoline made i was rushing trying to get this video so it's also a great thing to not rush ever with this process right i mean look at now red he makes a video like every 10 months right he, he makes a video almost as often as Kendrick Lamar releases music because if you rush, you're not going to be on the other side of it to tell the story with science and chemistry, particularly. Another concern people have is, well, safety, health safety. People are saying my health is at risk. People are saying I'm creating benzene and I'm polluting the whole neighborhood and I'm going to get cancer and everybody around me is going to get cancer. Okay, let's address that. That's a pretty simple one to shoot down. And I'll tell you why. All right. First off, my machine doesn't make emissions. I had an explosion. That's an exception. You don't have an explosion every day. You don't have an explosion with the proper operation. But outside of things like explosions, the machine, everything is captured and controlled. When things are operating how they're supposed to, nothing leaves that machine. All of my waste from the machine, which by the way, there is no waste. All the waste is all of our products. I keep every single thing. I don't put it in the environment. I don't leach it into water. Every single thing I capture until I have the proper tools to test what's in it so I can know how to properly, you know, process it. So that way, when I do want to, whether I sell it or just use it myself, it's not any type of environmental hazard. So that's one. For two, to address benzene. For one, benzene is the highest in polystyrene or styrofoam. Not all plastic will give you a ton of benzene for one. For two, even if the plastic gave you a ton of benzene, yes, benzene is dangerous, but I'm not creating so much benzene to where I literally am putting everybody in a 50 mile radius around me at risk for one, right? That's, a, that's the first step. Um, and also for two, that's also assuming the benzene's just being released and put out there, but the benzene is stuck in the oil until the oil is either spilled or burned. Uh, and in my case, the, I really keep the oil. I really, like if I ever burn it for a video, it's burning for a few seconds. Uh, I usually have a mask on and it's done. And then I keep the rest of it. I store it. Because once again, for all my products, it's the same thing. I store them until I can figure out 
but get the proper tools to figure out what's in them and how to properly process them so that way I'm not doing any type of environmental harm or health harm. Um, and I usually, you know, when I'm not making a video and talking, I'm usually always running a respirator with my stuff. So, you know, I'm not saying that it's not a risk at all. It certainly is. And it certainly should be taken serious. But I'm saying that I do think that some of the claims can be definitely over-exaggerated because um, it's just not at a big enough scale. I'm not making enough of anything for just a cup of it to, to potentially be a risk for my whole neighborhood, right? But I am aware of the, you know, the risks of the products I make, and I do take it serious. I respect um, people that are concerned about it. I'm just saying that um, that what I've been doing is not something that's inherently polluting or, or creating environmental hazards, um, and that, of course, there are ways I can do things better, and I will be doing things better, um, but it's not a matter of right now with some type of urgent case of like, oh my goodness, if I don't get my fuel outside of these containers, it's going to spill somehow and then it infects the whole neighborhood with benzene and such. So that's another thing, the, um, another critique I like to address there. Another one I like to bring up is energy efficiency. A lot of people talk about energy efficiency and they say, okay, you're making these machines, but it will never be energy efficient. It's never going to produce enough energy on the back end to even be worth it. You're just wasting energy. You're consuming more energy to process this plastic than the, how much energy it takes to make these fuels. So you're actually creating more pollution at the end of the day because you're using a coal plant to get this electricity, turn the plastic into fuel just to burn that fuel. You're making more carbon emissions at the end of the day. Well, I'll say this. First of all, if you leave plastic in the environment, anywhere in the environment, the ocean, the landfill, anywhere, okay, that plastic actually under photo, degrade, photo degradation from the sun will slowly break down over time and release methane and ethylene. Methane is 40 times worse than CO2. Ethylene is 25 times worse than CO2. So by doing nothing and just leaving it in the environment, you are making worse emissions than if I were to burn a ton of coal in a fire plant and release CO2, to burn or to process my plastic into fuel, take that fuel and burn that fuel and make CO2. You're releasing way worse greenhouse gases just leaving it there and doing nothing. And when you leave it in the environment, it releases microplastics, which get into everything, give you cancer, okay? Carcinogenic microplastics. And you have the eyesore of plastic everywhere. And the plastic in the ocean prohibits or inhibits algae life. So you have less algae in the ocean to suck out CO2 out of the air. The ocean sucks out more CO2 than trees, okay? And you're destroying animal life marine life so you're destroying the environment so if some people literally say you're better off leaving it in the ocean that's completely erroneous that's completely nonsense that's written off immediately just because of those things alone now for everybody saying the energy thing for one this process can actually produce more energy on the back end than the energy consumption without breaking the law of thermodynamics and that's because the law of thermodynamics says energy cannot be created nor destroyed we're not creating energy we're extracting energy out of the plastic so as long as there's a source of plastic being put into the machine, energy is being put into the machine. And if the machine is operating at a high enough efficiency, the energy extraction on the back end can exceed the energy consumption because at some point, the energy that it took to heat up the machine is not going to need to be sustained at that same level. So once the machine, for example, hits 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, we don't need to have as much energy going in to keep it at that height, at that same level of temperature. We keep adding in plastic, the plastic breaks down, helps more plastic break down, and then you get uh, a higher energy conversion on the back end. So it is possible, and I've already done it with my past machine, Mark IV, Mark 4.5. I'm sure I've already done it, but I haven't properly calculated my numbers of natural gas and carbon because I blew up the next day. So I can't say for sure, but there are pyrolysis plants all over the world that already run off of the natural gas they make and still make oil and carbon, which are energy, by the way, too. So they're already making more energy, not making, but extracting more energy than the energy consumption. So that claim is written off, too. Energy is not a problem. And even if my machine never reached the energy efficiency, energy efficiency or energy profitability does not necessarily correlate directly to monetary monetary profitability. And how can I say that? I can say that because we have many different types of recycling plants that exist in this world where the value comes from recycling, not energy. Do you ask a steel recycling plant, how much energy are they getting out? Do you ask a plastic to plastic recycling plant, how much energy are they getting out? Do you ask a glass recycling plant, how much energy are they getting out? A car? No, you don't. 
You don't ask it because the value is in that recycled product that comes out, not in the energy. Because all these processes consume a ton of energy, yet nobody's asking their energy efficiency. You only ask that about me because I'm making something that can be used as energy. I'm making fuel, so you think it's a generator. You get so focused on the fact I'm saying I'm making gasoline from plastic that you think the whole thing is about trying to be a generator and produce electricity or energy. It's not. That's not the goal. The goal was to get rid of plastic in a controlled way, to get rid of microplastics, not produce microplastics while doing so, and we just happen to get the gasoline out, the diesel out, the jet fuel, the carbon, the natural gas. We can supplement the running of the machine, supplement the costs with those things. However, that was never the goal. I don't care if I was getting bloody dung out of the machine. If I'm getting rid of plastic, truly destroying it, truly ending microplastics in a controlled way, that was the whole point of this machine. That's the value. And it just happens that we make this fuel that can be sold, the carbon can be sold, the natural gas can be sold, and they can be supplemented back to help run the machine and offset some costs. And that's amazing. That's bloody brilliant. So that's completely written off. And then that's not even including the fact that the machine operating off of microwaves, which operate off of electricity, unlike a traditional pyrolysis reactor, we can actually run the machine off of solar panels, off of wind, off of hydroelectric, nuclear, anything that runs off of electricity or produces electricity, including any renewable source, could be fusion. We can run the machine off of it. So imagine you have a big solar farm, have excess of electricity, and guess what? You know how they what they normally do with the excess electricity? They put it into batteries, inefficient conversion batteries, okay? Now what we can do with the extra electricity, we can get rid of waste and make the best batteries ever, which are liquid fuels, liquid and gaseous fuels, the best batteries ever. So that's the, ba the best thing. And let's also not forget, guys, because a lot of people are like, okay, you're making this fuel out of plastic, but what's the point? What's the point of making fuel out of plastic when well, you could just burn the plastic? Okay, in an incinerator. Here's the point to that. If I were to just burn this plastic in an incinerator, I gotta use that energy right then, right there. It's limited. Incinerators, when done properly, have to be absolutely gigantic, have to have proper scrubbers, rust group doing way worse pollution than anything else on the world. Incinerators also produce way more CO2 than pyrolysis does. Okay, on both ends of pyrolysis. The energy input and when you burn the stuff that comes out. You're producing more CO2 in an incinerator. Another thing about an incinerator is that, think about it. Okay. Incinerators are right then their energy. Pyrolysis, we're making storable energy. Okay? You have an incinerator, maybe you can put the electricity into a battery, but that's an inefficient conversion. You can't haul tons of batteries to be worth it. Why don't we why don't we have big battery trucks, but we have big oil trucks that go to the gas stations? Because that amount of energy density in that oil truck is absolutely preposterous. More than any type of battery could dream and hope for for that weight. Right, We are making that same type of energy density, high calorific value fuel through the process of pyrolysis, turning plastic back into the oil it came from, from crude oil. Plastic in itself has more energy than diesel, gasoline, and jet fuel. The chains, the hydrocarbon chains of plastic are longer than motor oil and asphalt. Plastic has so much energy in it and we just throw it away. And pyrolysis is the best way to extract that energy to get that out. Right? Or maybe it's not the best way, but it's one of the best ways to do so. And the point is, turning plastic, not into another piece of plastic, but back into that energy is the best thing we could do with it, right? Because we make that storable fuel, that liquid fuel, that gaseous fuel that can be transported at a low weight for how much energy is within it, that can be stored for how long you want, that could be used in so many different engines and applications. There's just no better way to deal with this plastic. And when it's cleaned up properly, the fuel can burn clean. And that's another thing people say too. Well, it will never burn clean. Yes, it can burn clean because plastic comes from crude oil. So there's nothing in plastic that isn't in crude oil. So anything, any toxin that's in this plastic is a petrochemical product. And any petrochemical product has been studied forever. Any heterocyclic or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> All these different terms of these, these hydrocarbons. They already exist. They've already been studied. There's already solutions to every single one. And I could go on to a video talking about all that stuff. We don't have to worry about it. It's about figuring out what's in there so you can figure out what you need to do with it, how to process it, how to get the stuff out and do it properly. And that's the point I'm trying to make. This is a journey I'm going along. We're all learning together and we're going to learn and continue to learn what the process, the process is necessary 
that need to be implemented to, to properly clean my thing, my products up. But we got to know what's in them first. And right now, it's just hearsay going back and forth to say, is this in there or is this in there? How much of this is in there? How much is that in, of that is in there? We don't know. We got to get the proper analysis and we can figure out how to deal with it. But the point is, it can be dealt with because every single thing is a petrochemical hydrocarbon product. And that's what we literally get from crude oil. And we've been processing crude oil, the dirtiest thing, into EPA approved gasoline, diesel and such. So we can do it.